Hi, everybody. My name is John DePietro. And I'm Bob Zagami with the Camper Report Show. Bob, on today's Camper Report Show, we're going to be talking with a Canadian journalist who's going to tell us that our friends north of the border are not too happy that the border is only open one way. And I'm going to be talking with Mark Harlett, the new Chief Operating Officer of Truma. Those stories, plus all the news of the day right here on the Camper Report Show. Stay with us, everybody. Sleeping on the short RV queen topper is as comfortable as sleeping at home. Now that we have the topper on there, it's made all the difference. It's really comfortable. And the comfort comes from the fact that it's not too firm, nor is it too soft. It's kind of the right level of comfort for being out, especially when you're away from home. And welcome back to the Camp Report Show. Here's the news segment. And there's a lot of weather-related news, Bob, that we're going to talk about in this segment. And the first thing is there are campgrounds down south and out west that have been ravaged by either hurricanes or fires. And people often wonder how many of these small family-owned campgrounds survive. But we found out that Arvik, and you'll tell us who Arvik is, has been helping these campgrounds get back on their feet, especially during big upcoming busy seasons ahead. Talk about that, please. Yeah, Arvik is the National Association of RV Parks and Campgrounds, and that's kind of their umbrella for all the uh, states and the private campgrounds in the country. And they actually have a disaster relief fund that they contribute to it on, on a regular basis, but they've gone out and asked for additional contributions because as you said, everything this past week has been weather related. And when you stop and think about the impact on campgrounds, which are outdoors, you've got the hurricane in Louisiana and Mississippi all along the Gulf Coast with tremendous damage. Wildfires in California, which now there's also a wildfire in Lake Tahoe that isn't getting much attention, but that's another area. I've got friends out there actually, and they posted that they were safe last night, uh, but that's another area. Uh, floods in Tennessee, that were devastating, came out of nowhere. The Hurricane Henry that we had in the Northeast, and now we're gonna get the remnants of Ida this weekend, and Hurricane Fred in California and Georgia. And just That's just a tremendous amount of land space. And obviously in that space are a lot of campgrounds and a lot of campers are at risk and uh, have had to evacuate. And there have been some fatalities. Right. And with that situation, uh, just going a little bit further with it, in California, all of the state forests, which, again, California's got a little um, warmer climate, they come on to a busy season, Labor Day weekend, their state forests are all closed throughout the entire state of California. Yeah, they closed them for two weeks starting uh, August 31st, which was yesterday. And it's 20 million acres of California's national forest. They've shut it down completely yep. for two weeks. And they said at least September 17th. So there's no guarantee that in two weeks it will open up again if their conditions don't uh, get better out there. Yep. And it's crazy when you think about how dry the West Coast is and how wet, how wet, how the, wet East the East Coast, Coast is. Yeah, yeah. exactly. And uh, continuing our string of bad news, we're, sound, we're starting to sound like a network news program here. Continuing <laughs> our string of bad news, because of some of the oil production facilities in the South that may have suffered damage with one of the several storms that has come through there, there is a prediction that gas prices may spike for a period of time until things can come back online. Yeah, I'd be surprised if, if they don't. Uh, typically a category four storm in the South could take them offline for three weeks and more. And this is more devastating in terms of the number of, uh, I think it was 14, 14 refineries that have been shut down in some uh, manner. And you, you will see them start to slowly go up over the next two or three weeks. And it's, it's unfortunate because we had actually started to see a downturn in prices. prices we noticed right. it when we were in Indiana last week and I noticed it back here in in Maine, that they had, they'd gotten back down. I saw some under three dollars a gallon here, which we hadn't seen for several months. Exactly. Um, but that's that's going to start inching its way up there, and uh, the devastation down there. I mean, you got a million people out of power, number one. But with all these refineries taken offline, it's it, it's it's going to cause a lot of problems. That's for okay. sure. And before we end with some good news, we should remind our viewers. 
that if they are in the storm's path, do not, do not try to think that your RV is going to survive a hurricane. Get out of there, whether you have to tow it out or whether you have to leave it and get out. But so many people have said that, especially if you're parked near a creek, that these creeks and rivers can rise so rapidly that you won't even be able to get out of there in a vehicle because of washed out roads. So we do want to tell our RVing friends to get out of town when the hurricane warning and tornado warnings and um, foul weather warnings are coming your way. Right, Bob? Yeah, and, and, and the plus aspect of the RVing end of it is for many people, getting out of town means hopping in their RV and driving long distances out of the dangerous path of the hurricane. So it's not unusual to see a fleet of RVs on the road as people evacuate the area and head north or uh, east to get out of the uh, path of the storm. Right, and let's end with some good news. As you can see from the picture behind me, it is the start of pro football season, college football season, high school football season, Pop Warner football season, or soccer or whatever your kids or grandkids or friends or neighbors or relatives are playing. And it's a huge time for tailgating. And you know what? I don't care. The football game in many times is, is secondary to the fun that you have in the tailgate part of the event. Uh, and I know you've been to several yourself. Yeah, it's, it's a fun time and uh, RVers love to tailgate and, uh, you know, they do everything from breakfast. A lot of them will start at breakfast, have games and, and eventually get into the stadium around, uh, you know, game time at 12 or one o'clock and then come out, of the, come out of the game and have dinner in the parking lot while everybody else decides how to get home. That's it's a- an extravaganza for sure. Exactly true. And I know people that start tailgating in the morning don't even go to the game because they'll watch it on their big widescreen TV on the side of their RV. And then we'll uh, start partying when the other 60, 70,000 people come back into the parking lot. But that's the topic of another, uh, of another show altogether. And we want to tell people that this is what, Bob? The Camper Report Show. Stay with us, everybody. Mike here from RV Blogger. Don't waste hundreds of dollars on an external GPS for your RV. All you need to do is download the RV Life app right onto your phone. This app is so cool. It has RV GPS built right into it. So you can load all the specific measurements and weights for your RV. It'll give you directions safe for your RV to follow. And by the way, if you have RV Trip Wizard, directions for your trips upload into this GPS automatically. All right, welcome back everybody to the Camper Report Show. And my guest today is Mark Hollett, the new Chief Operating Officer at Truma. Mark, welcome to the show. Glad to have you. Thanks, Bob. Good to be here. Yeah. So you've got some new responsibilities, but uh, before we talk about those and and some of your products, give us a a kind of a 30-second overview of, of Truma for people that may not be familiar with the name in the RV industry. Sure. Um, So Truma has been around since 1949, founded uh, in Munich, Germany, post-World War II. The name Truma actually comes from Harry S. Truman. Uh, He was instrumental in help supporting Germany post-World War II with the Marshall Plan. And our founder, Philip Price, benefited from that. And he sent a letter actually to um, the president and asked him to use his name, drop the N, and called it Truma, um, but we actually still have a letter sitting in our museum in Munich, uh, in the office in the headquarters there that actually is signed back from Harry S. that he would be uh, happy to to lend his name to the business. So, yeah, several years later, back in 2013, we actually founded uh, the company here in North America, and uh, the last eight years we've been doing business and selling products since 2015. So we have a long history back to uh, to the North American market, and it's come full circle and uh, yeah, it's great to be here and um, happy to help you out today. Yeah. You know, one of the things that I always appreciated because I got to know Truma right away after you came into the uh, States is the methodical program and the way that you introduced the product. It was slowly, it was deliberate. It was making sure service was up before sales. Talk about the Truma philosophy and what's, what's actually behind the products. 
So there's a lot that goes in behind the products. Um, uh, German engineered, uh, German manufactured products. So um, a lot of due diligence on the engineering development side. Um, when we did come to market first, we brought two products, the, the Truma Combi, which is our combination furnace water heater. And at the time we also developed, we spent a lot of time uh, surveying the market before we did come to North America. And we looked at the water heating side and we developed specifically our on-demand hot water heating system, the Truma AquaGo, for specifically for the North American market. Um, combining uh, the, the benefits of a tanked water heater and a, uh, an on-demand system um, to ensure we have continuous hot water. Um, that, that design process and the efforts that go into that, um, and you touched on service as well, we've, we've tried to make a, a, an approach to the market where we can scale with the market. Um, our goal is not to be the, on every vehicle, um, we've started at the premium level, supporting premium manufacturers and giving them some differentiation with their vehicles. And we want to ensure that we have the capacity within our service team. We know that services is a critical aspect, and it's something that we've been very focused on as a company through the years, going back to the early 70s when Truma and Germany actually had mobile service techs. Um, which would go into the Alps at Christmas time and, and help support customers um, during their precious vacation time um, that they weren't down. Um, we're trying to continue that philosophy in the North American market. We have mobile service guys in Florida, Texas, Arizona. We're looking to add additional um, people hit there. We also have our, our facility here in Elkhart, um, our, our headquarters in Elkhart, where we have two service bays and service technicians here, were, which are able to support our customers with any issues that they have. And whether that's training or an actual issue with the product, we hope that there's not issues with the product, um, but it, it does happen. So, Sure. Well, let's talk a little bit about products because you've got a new one. Uh, let, let's start with the new air conditioner. And then I want to talk a little bit about the coolers behind you, because I think your coolers are cool, but go ahead and talk about the air conditioner. Uh, yeah, so we're, we're getting ready. We're really excited to be launching our, our first air conditioning product, uh, a rooftop air conditioner, which will be the Aventa. Fortunately, I don't have a picture here to show you. Maybe you can we'll, we'll insert put, we'll, something. We'll, we'll put one in there. Okay. Um, so the, the Truma Aventa is uh, designed specifically for the North American market. We'll have two, two models, a 13,500 BTU and a 15,000 BTU model. Um, we are targeting um, specifically the OEM market as we go to launch this fall. Um, so for consumers that are looking to, uh, to get that product, they'll have to talk to their OEMs or, or at their dealers to, to find out where it can be found. Um, the, the product is somewhat unique as far as its design, low profile. Um, and the main thing we were, we were focused on is ensuring efficiency. So the product is designed that you can plug your RV into your 15 amp circuit at your home and, and run the, the air conditioner. Um, and that, that is critical and it's becoming more and more important as people move away from um, generators and running off of their lithium system where you have your dogs and, and uh, things inside the vehicle for extended periods of time and people that want to get off the grid and using the energy that is on board the vehicle. And, and that's where that German engineering excellence comes into play. Talk, talk about the coolers because they have such a wide variety of applications. Yes, so the, the coolers we launched um, early in, in 2019, um, we have a, a complete line now. We have eight different models. Um, you can see some of them in the background here um, from, the, from, from this side, uh, some of our smallest one. We go from a 30 liter up to 105 liter units. They are fridge freezers, so they can act both as a refrigerator or you can take it down to minus eight degrees Fahrenheit and freeze. These are popsicles here. Um, so you, you can you can take them to the soccer game um, for your kids. You can take them to to camping. Um, they are being installed in in original as original equipment for OEMs right now, um, uh, with several OEMs uh, that that are using them in both their motorized as well as um, uh, pull behind trailers. 
Um, so they do have a lot of different applications. We we have them in our service vans for our technicians. They, they have a C30, uh, our smallest C30 fits conveniently between the seats on the ProMaster. Um, so when they're out on the roads down in Florida and, and Arizona, where it can be some fairly hot days, they can have um, cool drinks there. It runs both on 12 volt and 120 volt. Um, and it has some unique features. You can see it's fairly ruggedly designed. Um, so we, we designed these specifically for the Australian Outback and we've expanded and now we sell them across around the world. That's, that's amazing. And it's great for tailgating too, if you're going to go to the uh, football game. That's, we've actually, we've actually had them um, before we launched them. We took them to the Notre Dame. We were in the parking lot. Uh, we might've had a few beers in them at the time as well. <laughs> in the parking lot. Well, you know, I, I've seen them as you, as you mentioned with the OEM manufacturers, especially those that are building rugged units for boondocking and, and out in, in the wilderness, whether it be a pop-up or a class B or even class C motorhomes, just the fact that they've got that availability to them. It, it, it either stands alone or it supplements some of the traditional refrigeration and freezer systems that might be on the uh, RV. Yeah. So, so some people are looking for extended use. Um, they, they, they need some other freezer capacity. Um, fridges are typically small, even in the B vans, we, we have users that are, that are taking this as an extra storage um, and it expands. I mean, even, um, you know, during COVID people were, were using these to, you know, they didn't want to go shopping. So it acts as a, as an extra um, uh, fridge or freezer. I mean, I use mine on, on the patio at, at the house in the summertime when you have friends over and you want to, you don't want to have to go down to the beer fridge in the garage. You can have it out on the deck um, with you and, and have your drinks close by. It, the other thing I think it does, it adds some flexibility to people that do invest um, in a higher end product that if they do want to use it in their trailer, they can use it in their trailer. And when you're not using your trailer, you can put it in the back of your SUV and plug in, plug it into your 12 volt and take it on a road trip with you. So no more soggy sandwiches and, and ice. If you want ice, you can make ice. Mm -hmm. Yep. And take, take it to the soccer, like you say, take it to the soccer game on Saturday morning, the football game Saturday afternoon and the family reunion on Sunday. That's, <laughs> just, it's a great investment. <laughs> it, a is, it is. Yes. All right. My guest this morning has been Mark Hollett, Chief Operating Officer at Truma. Uh, water systems, heating systems, air conditioners, coolers, great product line. So check it out at your local dealer and check it out on your new RV. Hopefully there'll be one there. Any, any closing comments, Mark? No, great. If there's any questions, people are, are welcome to reach out to us online. Uh, there'll be www i'm sure you put this up dot truma dot net um you can call us our service lines are, are available to help support and answer questions and we're here to educate as well so um we want to we want to have an educated uh, rvers out there that they understand what the capabilities of the systems are and whether it's our system or someone else's um we want to help uh, help the community as much as possible that's great Great company. And we'll be I'll out at Hershey's to, to see you guys as well. So yeah, I'll be I'll be over there to say hello too. All right. Look Thank forward you. to seeing you in a couple of weeks, Mark. Thanks very much for joining us on the Camper Report Show. Thanks, Bob. I'm Jesse from Outsiders Calling, and I love adventurous family travel with my wife, Jenny, and our son, Tucker. For over three years, we've RV'd across the U.S. and Mexico, and it's tough to find places that meet all our needs. Now, we plan our trips with the RV Trip Wizard, pull it up in the RV Life app, select it, and go. It helps us discover amazing new places to grow together as a family. RV Trip Wizard with the RV Life app is an awesome trip planning combination. You can get both for one low annual price. Check out rvlife.com to learn more. Hey everybody, welcome back to the Camp Report Show. My name is John DePietro, and we're gonna have a little bit different interview this time than we normally have, where we talk about camping and camp stoves and where are you going next? And um, we're going north of the border to talk to our friends at Snowbird and RV Traveler Magazine. I got that name right, Jason? Yes, uh, you I sure did. Sure I got that, that name right. And let's bring in the president and publisher, Mr. Jason Tanselman, as he very boldly said, handsome, but with a T. That's so, correct. 
with that being said, Jason, um, you know, your publication has been around for quite a while. It's very well respected. And when we talked with um, another one of your associates earlier in the year, we talked about the um, Canadian US border not being open and it was closed both ways, but just very shortly, like in mid August, late August, the border opened, but it was a one way opening. It was only for the Americans to go north. And um, you've got a situation up there where you got a lot of Canadians that are snowbirds, that's the name of the, the publication. They wanna come south and they can't right now. What's going on? What, what's the feeling in Canada? Oh, wait well, I, I was the feeling in Canada, eh? Yeah, A, a is correct. Um, you know what? It's, uh, there, there's definitely frustration, you know, and and it, it's to the point, you know, where everybody's looking more, more for loopholes than anything now, you know. So the traditional ways of getting down to, you know, on the West Coast, down to California or in the East Coast of Florida, you know, you drive your rig down and you have your, you know, you have your resort that you go to and, and you park for the for the winter, you know, Canadians are, are needing to get creative, you know, they're trucking vehicles down they're they're trucking their, their rigs down and then they're flying down. And, you know, it's, it's really creating a more expense and, and more headache and, and heartache for, for the Canadians heading South. But it seems like, you know, there's a percentage that are finding a way to still to get down there, you know, being able to fly down, as opposed to drive down is, is a little bit of a bizarre situation. Um, yeah. And I understand that, you know, about 10 months ago when everything got locked down and shut down, it was both ways. Let's, let's keep everybody safe. But, you know, now with, you know, it being one way and, and the road open one way going North, but not South, it is, it is a little baffling for sure. And I don't, I don't understand what the, what the reasoning would be behind it because at the end of the day, you know, our friends south of the border, you know, we welcome their U.S. dollars up into Canada any day of the week. And, um, you know, they're interacting with the Canadians and, and things like exactly. that and you know, have the potential of, of bringing whatever we have um, back with them. So it really it, it really surprised me. I thought there might be a weak leg, you know, that the borders open north. And then a week later, once things kind of get fine tuned or maybe even two weeks later, it opens going south and you know that would that would be understandable you know iron out the wrinkles but the fact of it still being closed and and saying till now you know we just got notification it's minimum september 13th they're going to revisit it it's um it is it is baffling it, and it and it's it's just it just doesn't make sense it, it just it's one of those things that just doesn't make sense you know for we have we have hundreds of thousands of canadians that, that plan on going south every winter you know, many of them don't even have homes up here. You know, they bring their rigs down there when it's too cold and they bring the rigs back up here when it's too hot down there. So they're caught in limbo and, and the, the situation and the issues that they're getting in is really realistically they're in, in, in a sense, homeless because when they're up here, there's just, there's not enough parks and there's not enough space to house them, you know? So they're frigging exactly. staying at Walmart parking lots and, really scrambling you know in the most enjoyable part of their life in retirement it's it's not what they they had planned you know naturally none of us planned for a pandemic but but at some point you know we need to start getting back to some normalcy and and like us and and the border is a good start having it open both ways and we both deal with the the consequences together you know we're going to move covid back and forth probably forever well that sounds what it's like Sounds yeah, we like we just we need yeah. to get used to it and just rip, rip, rip the bandaid off and give her. Yep, you had mentioned a little bit earlier that people are looking at uh, some sketchy ways to get over the border. Uh, certainly not sneaking over the border. That's another topic. We'll talk about that in a second. However, um, I guess what's happened when I talked with Perry or uh, one of your colleagues a while ago, people were getting uh, transport companies to tow their RV over the border. And that's perfectly legal. And then they just pick them up in Washington somewhere, at least on the West Coast, pick them up in Bellingham, Washington, or somewhere around there, and then go, then go to um, Texas or Florida or Arizona. I guess Arizona is more from, you know, from the West Coast. Is that going to be a burgeoning business again this year? Do you think? Oh, yeah, hundred percent. You know, you know, between towing rigs and hauling rigs across. 
or just, you know, a lot of people are just leaving their rigs parked at the park where they usually go to and even just flying back and then transporting their, their daily vehicles because it's mm. cheaper. But it definitely that's, that's a loophole that, you know, if you phone a transport company asking to move your rig right now, there's a massive wait because they're so backed up, they're backlogged because they can't keep up with the business. Yeah. Now, another thing that, that we noticed when we were up uh, near Canada last summer is we were in Vermont in, no, excuse me, up in Plattsburgh, New York, and it was in July. It was 4th of July weekend. Big day in Canada, right? 4th of July. Oh, well, that's we're July, July 1st. We're, that's we're July 1st. 1st. Yeah, we're Dominion July 1st. Day, right? Dominion. Yeah, once we... Once we sober up to after July 1st, then we go across the border and then we do it all again with our American friends. <laughs> so the thing that I noticed is when we're coming across the bridge over Lake Champlain, I see all these boats that were still in their wrap. They still had their winter wrap on them. And they said Montreal on the back of the boats. And then I realized those people must have brought their boats down in the, in the fall, like they do every year, keep them in the US for whatever reason, uh, or at least keep them stored there, but they couldn't take them back. Now I'm presuming exactly. that if you drove up to Plattsburgh, New York right now, you'd find those same boats um, there because the Canadian owners couldn't come across the border to take them to uh, you know, go anywhere down here or up there. Yeah, that's correct. It's, uh, it's uh, you know, we, we actually have a, a group of boating publications and and uh, the woes are very similar, you know, not to the numbers of the, of the RVers by any stretch, but the woes are the same, whether it's boats or RVs, it's, uh, it's a real problem. Yep. Especially if it's going to be international travel, like they would That's you know, right. go down the inter intercoastal and that type of thing down into Florida. That's um, right. You know, one topic that was brought up and generally RVers are not political. Well, they're, they have political beliefs, but the topic of, politics doesn't come up in the RV world, but somebody did bring this up the other day. It was said that the Canadian border is staying closed because of COVID, because we don't want the Canadians bringing their COVID down here. Okay? Yeah. At the same time, the southern border of the U.S. is open for people coming from other areas uh, that aren't RVers. But if COVID is such an issue with Canadians and Americans, why is it not an issue with South Americans and Americans, uh, South Americans and United States people? Is that a topic of discussion at all up where you are over the border in Canada? Yeah, I think that, you know, definitely it's a, it's a topic. And, you know, I, but I think the greater topic of, of the greater topic is why is the border open north and not south? You know, I think that trumps the, uh, you know, why are they allowed to do it on the southern side, you know, down in Mexico allowed to come into the US and things. I think it's, it's a more, it's a broader and a larger topic of why the, why US can come into Canada, but not, not the other way around. You mm -hmm. know, I, I think that that just, that trumps everything. And that's what the, what the talk is. Yep. Yeah. Tr by because Trump. no, and, and at the end of the day, nobody can really give um, a valid reason of why it is like that. Yeah. So are the Canadians getting restless now? Are they talking to their political leaders and saying, hey, what's going on here? Oh, uh, yeah. And because, answers, Jason. Yeah, yeah. It's how and right now we're having a federal we're in the midst of a federal election coming up. So it, it's a hot button. And, um, you know, our current prime minister, um, you know, he's he's called an election at probably the worst time that you could, you know, during the middle of a pandemic. You know, there's a it's a terrible forest fire season out here in British Columbia. And uh, to be selfish and to call an election is is uh, it, it could turn around and really bite them. There's a lot of people unhappy that, you know, yeah, it's it's great that you want to run as a leader and, and things like that. But there's some bigger fish to fry right now with our, our snowbirds and, you know, people that have worked their entire lives to retire in the in the place that they're at and enjoy their retirement. And. And they're getting cut off at the knees. And, and I understand why the, the frustration is happening. So there is there is a lot of political backlash. But really, at the end of the day, you know, I guess people get more upset. And it's, you know, well, if we're not allowed down there, we should close the border to stop the Americans from coming up here. Well, that, right. that doesn't solve anything. And that's, oh, no, that's not fair. Yeah. 
that that's not that's not fair to the businesses in Canada that rely on our friends from the U.S. to come up and spend their money. And you know what? It's not fair to the resorts and the parks that have spent all this money on upgrades and taken the COVID downtime as a chance to regenerate their parks and things, waiting for us Canadians to come down with our cash. It's not fair to them, you know, like, you know, like with us all, there's, we've all invested heavily into things and let's just open it up and start spreading our money around like, like we used to. Like we used so to. I, I do, I, I feel for the parks in the U S and the businesses along the way that they've got to be feeling a massive pinch yep. by us not being able to spend our money down there. And as it says right here in the photo, we need to have a greater alliance between the U S and Canada. Yeah. hundred percent. I believe that hundred percent. So if people want to um, read more about your publications, if they want to read it online, where should they go, Jason? Best place to go is to our, our parent website, and it's uh, suncruisermedia.com. Um, so it's just the way it, the way it sounds, www.suncruisermedia.com. And, and you'll find links to our, our, our group of publications, which includes you know, RVing and snowbirds, of course. We have a, we have a boating um, audience as well. And we have a, a, an off-road and overlanding audience as well. So they all sort of intermingle with each other. So we, we put them all in one place and, and uh, we'd you love to like, send you. We'd love, like to, we'd love to have some more readers. They like recreation. You betcha. Exactly. We want to thank you so much for taking time from your morning. You're, you know, we've got a three hour time difference. You're on the West coast of Canada. I'm on the East coast of the United States, but through this modern methodology of the internet and zoom and that type of thing, uh, we're all one happy family. And uh, when the time comes that we all can get together, we'll do it. Yep. Sounds good. We'll see you. We'll see you on the road. Hopefully sooner than later, John. Thank you so much, everybody. This is the camp report show. <music>